Hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. On this video tutorial, I'm going to show you this really fun technique, technique called ombre painting. And we're going to do it on some cloth zip pouches that were super inexpensive that came from Hobby Lobby, but you can get them at Walmart too. And the possibilities are just endless. I'm super excited about it. So as you're hopping on, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. As we're going along, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to sprinkle all that usual stuff. What is this? Okay, so um, I'm going to just give you a quick peek what these can look like. And then we're going to do two of them start to finish. Okay, here's one. <gasps> is that cute or what? And here's the other. <gasps> okay, yes, they are cute. I'm pretty excited about it. And it's really fun too. It is quite messy though. Um, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is protect your work surface. Let's get this so that you can see better. I'll go down here. Um, you're gonna wanna protect your work surface and you're gonna wanna decide what color wave you wanna do. I have two little zip pouches. Um, this one is something that uh, Maker Studio used to have a while ago. They don't carry it anymore, but use what, what I always say, use what you have whenever possible. So we're gonna do one on this, and then this is one that either came from Walmart for around a dollar or Hobby Lobby for around a dollar. And they're just, you know, little canvas Ziploc pouches that are great for anything that you would want to carry in a book bag, in a purse, have as a um, little stash of things that you might need in the car, uh, in a diaper bag, all kinds of different things. So let's do this one first. And, no, let's do this one first. Okay, and we're gonna use, we're get, going to be using some, let me just find myself here, some gel art inks from Maker Studio. Um, they are really nice to work with and they give this watercolory effect that I love. So I'm just, um, just trying to pin this. There we go. Okay, so you have all the information there right at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to tape off the areas of your bag that you don't want to have uh, be stenciled. And also, I think it's a good idea for sure to put something inside of your little bag to protect it so that what you do on the top doesn't go through to the back because that will look super messy. Okay, so I just folded a, a paper towel in half and I'm sticking it in my little pouch. I did not iron these beforehand. I get that question all the time. Um, but you certainly could, and you are going to iron them after the fact because that's how you heat set the gel art ink from Maker Studio that we'll be using. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna take some blue painter's tape and I'm gonna put it around the edges. I learned something when I was doing my first one of these little pouches this morning and I'll share that with you. Um, I learned that if you don't get your tape completely pushed down, then the um, ink will bleed a little bit, which I don't know that I don't, I don't think it's a big deal. It's not a make or break for me, but I'll show you what you can do to make it a little bit more crisp, your line. And I just think that having the outside of these not have the, the ombre on it makes it stand out more. So you don't necessarily have to tape off your part of your uh, pouch if you don't want to. So I'm just putting my blue tape all the way up to the, like the seam where the zipper is and then the edge of the um, pouch. I need one more and I'll show you what I think works a little better. And don't 
worry if it's not completely precisely straight. It honestly does not matter. You could also do a blurry edge if you wanted that look. This is like one of those projects, you guys, I'm so excited about it. It takes no skill. Uh, we're not going to be stenciling for this project. Um, I did put a stencil on this pink one here just so that you could have an idea. I also did my fun little zipper pool thing, which I'm not going to be doing on this project, but um, I just threaded some pieces of ribbon through that, and then this is dark gray, and this is this awesome stencil that says be still and know. So I did put a couple links to stencils in the, um, the little thing I pinned below. Okay, so what I found doing this earlier was that we're gonna get it so wet that you really, I don't have any of my favorite little cardboard cake uh, box things from Walmart that I love to craft on. Next time I go to Walmart, I need to grab those. But, um, so I'm just using paper towels underneath this. So you need at least two layers and don't do this on um, a surface that would be ruined if it got wet. Okay, so I'm pushing the blue tape down all the way around. And then, and then I'm gonna use my fingernail right along the edge or my thumbnail to really crisply get that adhered. I know there's other kinds of tape like frog tape and some of those other painter tapes that might work better than this blue tape that I have here, but I'm using what I have. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And it has a paper towel inside. And we're working off of a plate and a, using a glass of water and two paint brushes. And um, I think let's do, Let's try, oops, let's try the red and the pink again, and let's put, add a little yellow, okay? So, let me set this aside so I have more room. Let's scooch down here so you guys can see. Let's see. You guys, this is so cool. I am feeling like I'm a watercolor artist today. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just take my paintbrushes and put them in here, and then I'm gonna do some little blobs on my plate. Uh, these, these are gel art inks, and I did put some links down below. I pinned it, and it's, it's like a blue heart and then a little artist lady and then another blue heart and it says Heidi's Maker Studio links. Um, so if you wanna take a peek at anything. So I put the pink on there, which is called Pretty as a Picture. The yellow is called Over Yonder. And then we're using the red, which is called Bless His Heart. So I have three colors here. And I think that working off of a plate like this is really easier than trying to do an artist's palette or a cardboard dish or something. We're gonna start with the darkest color at the bottom. Let's see, how do I wanna put this so you can see what I'm doing? Let's scooch this over a little bit. One more layer underneath it. I mean, this is so super messy, but it's super fun. Okay, so I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to grab some of this red and I'm just starting to add water to it here on the plate. I'll lift this up so you can see it in just a minute. You can do that with your brush or alternatively, you can just use a little spray bottle to spray some water into it. You want to get it um, so it's dissolved. Not completely, but um, and we're going to use the darkest color at the bottom, so I think this time I'm just going to go straight across. All right, so I'm starting to lay on, oops, I forgot something important. 
I found this morning that if you get your little bags wet, and if you use a lot of water as you're going along, it's easier to blend them. So ombre is the um, name of taking uh, colors and blending them in a graduating style from one color to the next. Okay, and I want a, lot, a little bit of the really, really dark red at the bottom, so I'm actually putting that on there. Okay, and then um, let's do the pink next. Same deal. We're just gonna add a bunch of water to our pink here. And I want to get this laid down while this layer below is still wet. Okay, I'll put this up so you can see. Okay, and now I'm just taking um, some water and I'm just pulling the two colors together. We're gonna keep blending as we're going along, but look, see how that's starting to graduate the red into the pink? Um, and let's add some more pink. Make this color a little bit thicker. This is one of those projects where you just kind of figure it out as you're going along. I've done ombre on watercolor paper, um, and this is kind of the same technique. It really is. Okay, I'm gonna use my bigger paintbrush here. Okay, and now I wanna add some yellow. So I, have I said hello to anyone? I don't know if I have. What do you guys think about this idea? These gel art inks from Maker Studio are so nice for this kind of a project. Oh my goodness. They, um, and I've used these also on the watercolor paper and they're great for that too. Okay, now I'm going to try to do a little blending here. I'm just pulling that yellow down into the pink a little bit. And if you get an area that you feel like it's too thick, you can dab it off a little bit. Okay, I'll lift this up and show you. So we're gonna go back to the red. Uh, hang on two seconds. his brother who's 19 out to lunch today's his day off and I wanted to say hello before he left so I hope that's okay with you guys okay so now I'm going to start another layer using the red and I keep adding more water to it and at this point, what I'm thinking is it's starting to get dry, so I want to put a bunch of water down on my project. And start 
start to kind of pull my colors together because I don't want this to be a really harsh line. This looks so cool on the last step when you take the tape off. Okay, I need some more pink. Gel art ink. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just ordered today um, some of the new Maker Studio metallic gel art inks. I can't wait to play with them. I also got some new stencils. So if you're curious about that, I did put some links, whoops, where am I, down here. And you can just click on that and it'll take you. And I'm looking for the places where I feel like the color has almost gone away too much. All right, this is where I am right now. And I'm going to, whoops, I've got a big blob of pink on here. I want to take that off. Now we're going to get our brush clean as best we can. And then we're just going to really work the layers into each other. I don't know what I think about using the yellow. You guys tell me in the comments what you think. I'll show you the other bag again in just a minute. And I didn't use yellow on that one. I don't know, maybe I'd like it better without that. Wonder what would happen if we added a little more red to it. Let's try just, let's play for just a second. It would become kind of more, ooh, I like that better. Instead of being such a loud um, yellow, this makes it more of a, uh, I don't know, watermelon -y color. And um, with these, with this kind of a project, you just want to sit down and start playing. Uh, like I always say, don't have it too set in your mind what you want it to look like. Just let your product projects sort of evolve, and I think you'll be a lot help you, happier with the end result if you do that. And you're going to just keep adding until you get the result that you are happy with. And I think we're starting to get there. Let me blur this line a little bit more. You can do this exact same technique with whatever colors appeal to you. So next up, we're going to do use this pretty teal color. And... Um, a green and a blue. So I'm just gonna take a paper towel right now and essentially pat it somewhat dry. What do you guys think so far? Ooh, it's pretty. I do think it needs a little more pink right here though. So let's just come back and grab some more full strength pink. Put that on there. Some of the lighter colors don't want to stay on. Whoops, that's really way too big of a blob. When we do the next one, we're using the um, Maker Studio uh, artist brushes, which are only a couple dollars. I only have two of those. Um, I did put a link for that in the comments, and I think that it's better if you use those. 
These ones are just El Cheapies and they keep dropping their bristles in my project. Okay, I'm gonna say good enough, let's pat it dry. And then I was so impatient with the other two projects that I actually used my blow dryer <laughs> to dry them off. Okay, so let's get make sure we get the whatever's on this tape. I'll show you this. And then you can go after this, you can go on to the next step if you want, after it's dry and after you heat set it with a hot iron on cotton, just going over and over and over it, um, then you can stencil. And I'll show you some of the choices that Maker Studio has. They, I, I love the Bible verse one, so that's what I'm gonna mostly show you. Okay, so I'm removing my tape. Oh my gosh, this turned out so cute. That's absolutely darling. I don't know if it even needs anything else on it. What do you guys think? Is that cute or what? If you like this, give me a this or a this. Um, so Facebook knows that you want pancakes tomorrow or later this afternoon when I share more craft projects. Ola says she loves it, it's so cute. Thank you. Okay, so I would let that dry and um, It'll be, you can use a blow dryer or a heat gun to help it along a little bit. And then once it's completely dry, I will, let's see if this bled through. It did. Oh, I'm so glad I used that paper towel in between. Um, when it's completely dry, then I'll heat set it with the iron. And then you could wash it, it's permanent. And then you could move on if you wanted and do a fun stencil on it. Like, this would be so cute to have this stencil that says, let go and let God. Or the one that I did on the other one that says, be still and know. Or this one that says, his love endures forever. Or, oh my gosh, this would be so cute. This one says, she is strong. This one says, the Lord is on my side, I will not fear. Um, I love this one. I am who you say I am. Chosen, um, loved. Those are all things that God says. Oh, this is a great one. It says, nothing can separate us from his love. Romans 8, 38. Or I could even use this one that we did on that t-shirt a while back. He left the 99 for me. There's a bunch more. Maker Studio has a whole bunch of them. And um, they usually come like four to six different Bible verses on one sheet. So if you wanna take a peek at any of that, any of those Bible verse stencils, just use my link right here to go in. And then there's three pages. So look through the three pages of stencils once you get there. I think it's super cute that it really almost doesn't need anything else. Let's put it right here. And let me put my little palette, my fancy palette aside. Okay, so this is the palette I was using before. I came live to do that, that green. And where did I put my bag? Here's my bag. And I usually like, this is just a, this is just a tip. I like to stencil the side that you would see when you zip your bag closed. So it's good with this at the right side because I'm right-handed. So when I open it up, I'll be looking at this side and when I close it, I'll be looking at this side. Um, so that's how I usually try to remember to do my projects. Okay, this guy needs paper towel and him also. Eat way more than the other one because this one is not lined. And I'm, gonna, I'm using two layers of paper towels and I'm just gonna cut this a little bit smaller than the length of these bags so that I can just put this in here, get it to lay straight. This, this blue and green and turquoise combination is, oh my gosh, I love it. 
What do you think? Should we maybe not do the tape just to see how that might look? I don't know. I think we will. Uh, but if you wanted, you could certainly do the tape. Okay, so I need some. Hey, y'all. This is my favorite color. This is the turquoise color. I'm just going to put a big blob on my plate. And this will come all off my plates just fine with water. Um, Okay, and then I need some green, which is called the grass is always greener. And then I need some navy blue, which, what is this called? It's called Hush Your Mouth. It's kind of funny. Do you guys have questions? If you're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube, Feel free to ask questions. Yes, Hobby Lobby has these bags. You can also get them at um, Walmart. I mean, you can get these kind of little zippered pouches at Michael's, at Joann's, and they're not very expensive at all. A bunch of things floating in this water. Okay, so this is my good artist brush. Maybe I only have one. Oh, no, here's the other one. No, that one I used my Podge on and the bristles are all glued together. <laughs> okay, so let's get our bag wet first. Oh, thank you guys for all the hearts. I so appreciate that. I just love to mix things up. And this exact same technique, I did a video on this, oh gosh, last summer I believe it was, or, or late spring using watercolor paper, using heavy watercolor paper, and we used the water and everything. And um, then when it was dry, we used the same products too. Then when it was dry, we did stencils, and I'm just looking to see if I have any of that out right now, I don't. But the same technique that you're gonna do for this, you can do for that. Okay, so I'm gonna start working my navy blue. your ombre you could go diagonal or up and down you don't have to follow any rules although most people do the darkest color on the bottom and then graduate up but you can keep mixing it up like I did with this one I came back to a darker color towards the top it's just totally personal preference look how cool that is isn't that just awesome this, these bigger bags at Hobby Lobby, I think were like $129. So, super affordable. And this, this size, I believe were, um, I believe that size was like 99 cents, if I'm remembering right. Let's go diagonal, I think. And I'm gonna do a loose outside. I'll hold this up in just a second to show you. I want to leave myself some room around the edges though, but I want that to be. Okay, this is how I started it. So now let's go on to the turquoise next. Make some more up. I'm using distilled water, but you could use, whoops, you can seriously use just regular tap water. I just have distilled water in my little spray bottle because that's what I use when I'm uh, adding it to my chalk paste. So I don't think it's necessary. Okay. Oh, I love how this is starting to bleed a little bit because of the fact that I had the bag wet. Do you see that on the bottom of the dark blue? 
Oh my gosh, I love that. Add a little more water and see what we can do in terms of blending these two colors together. I just do a wiggle, 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 and that seems to pull one color into the next. Okay, now let's do green. This, um, by the way, these gel inks, uh, I don't know how many colors they have now, a whole bunch. They um, are permanent on clothing, so you can make tea towels, t-shirts, pillows, pouches. You can make, um, you can use this on paper. You can use it on all kinds of things. And it does wash up if you get a little sprinkle on your working surface. But if you get a dark color on your clothes, I just want you to know this, you're going to have a little bit of a hard time probably getting it out. Don't too much there. Okay, so let's add our green. And then we'll pull it through. like the blue and green better I think I do um, or I like just the pink and red I'm not sure that I liked that yellow but it was worth a, um, a try so I'm just doing this little wiggle 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 thing to sort of start blending and you can take a paper towel if you feel like you, it's too wet at any point, um, let's pull these two colors into each other. Ooh, this is really cool. And I'm liking what's happening with the edges where it's bleeding. We might try to enhance that a little bit. Um, okay, let's go back to the navy blue here. Kind of like doing watercolor on cloth, which I think is so cool. Let's give that a little water. It's starting to feel kind of dry. Clean my brush off as best I can. And do this little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle here to sort of pull those two colors together. And you can keep fussing with it as long as you want. Okay, now let's do the turquoise. You can also start blending the colors on the plate if that's what you want or on whatever artist palette you're, you might be using. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Are you guys getting bored? I'm sorry, it, it does take a little while, but we won't be long, too much longer, so stay with me to the end. And, oh, I wanted to mention, if you guys end up doing this, 
project or doing something like this, I would love to see pictures. Um, so you can uh, you can share those pictures at our um, on our oops on our um, crafting group, which is Dreamy DIY. I, I always love to see when you guys do something that we've done here, your take on it. It's super motivating to me. So okay. We're getting there. We don't wouldn't even necessarily have to do the whole thing. That's one option. So maybe I'll do this green stripe and then I'll show you what we've got going. We'll talk about it a little bit more and then I might finish it off camera because I know this is taking a while. This room, this, this particular one reminds me of like a rainbow. Okay. So that is what we have so far. Anyways, um, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? So, uh, this is the green, the turquoise, and the navy blue. This one that I made before we came live is just red and pink mixed. And I have, like, a, when you add the pink to the red, it kind of becomes more of a hot pink. And then this is the red with a little bit... Um, less red and it, then it becomes a darker pink and then the pink is just the light pink and I used gray ink from same stuff gray gel art ink and a maker studio stencil and I did put some links down below and if you're interested in bible verse stencils they have a ton okay let's show you the other things we made oh my gosh this is so cute this one we just did and this is the yellow, pink, and red. And then this was the one that I did before I came on that had the tape also. And then you guys, I was just fiddling around. I wanted to show you this with some canvas fabric that I had earlier. And I'm gonna try, I'm gonna heat set it first with an iron. And then I'm going to try to do a white stencil of something like maybe that stencil that says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. That's a Maker Studio stencil on here. And I'll take pictures to show you how that turns out. But what I want you to know is that you can use this exact same technique for so much more than just these canvas pouches. So you could do this exact idea on a tea towel. I would make sure that it was a little tighter woven than just the flower sack towels. Use the bar towels. Um, and I just shared pictures of two types of tea towels that I prefer from Walmart uh, just a couple of days ago. So look back in the feed and um, it'll give you the information. Both of those towels are woven tight enough that you could do it on that. So you could do it on a t-shirt. Again, make sure it's pretty tight weave and definitely put something in between the two layers. You could do it on a tote bag. You could do this idea on some of those fabric pennants. Um, I, I can't even think of what else, but I mean, this idea is not just something that you could do with little zippered uh, tote bags, so. Um, and if you if you want to fiddle around with it, if you get some of the um, the gel inks, then you can purchase really thick. I bought mine at Walmart. Uh, watercolor paper. It's heavy weight is what you're looking for. Mine is Canson brand. I don't have it out, and it would take me a while to dig it out of my closet here. But you can do the exact same thing on watercolor paper with all these same supplies too. So, 
that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you. Um, if you want to take a peek at any of that, there is, I did pin a link to make it easy for you. Feel free to sprinkle. If you got this, if you got on at the end, um, it might be worth it for you to just go back to the beginning and, and watch it on replay because I talked about a lot of things uh, like how to do your tape if you're going to tape off the edges and whatnot. So, um, if you want pancakes, in other words, if you want Facebook to serve you what I'll be doing later today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and Christ and crafting on Sunday, then um, do some engagement here. It could be doing this or this or saying gobbledygook in the um, comments or asking a real question, but all of that is how Facebook decides who they're going to serve my pancakes, which are projects, um, photos and videos too. So if you're watching it on Facebook, that's what you need to know. If you're watching this on YouTube, you don't, you don't need to do that, but you certainly can. I do check my comments there and I'll, if you have questions, let me know and I'll be glad to answer them there. Anyways, and Wanda just sent me stars. Thank you, Wanda, I really appreciate that. Alrighty, you guys have a fabulous rest of your day, and um, I'll get all this information out for you guys. I'll get pictures, and I'll put them here in the comments, and I'll also do a separate post on DIY Dreaming. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.